Oh my God, they're evolving. Just not emotionally. My next door neighbor, the beard cell. Yep, two bad things in one. So I recently moved into a new house and we have some pretty cool neighbors. Well, all except for this one. This is a collection of incidents. UA, your unbiased narrator, referred to as OP, six foot two, 16 years old, white as snow, glasses and kind of thin. Apparently a Chad and a fake metalhead, at least by beard cell standards. It's never a good look when you start out calling yourself a Chad, but let's see where it goes from here. <laughs> <laughs> Beard cell, my runt of a neighbor, probably five foot five, fat AF, starting to grow a patchy beard with a wispy little pedo stash, all at the age of 14, which, not gonna lie, annoys me because I can't grow any facial hair, which sucks. Well, so much for those Chad jeans, I guess that's all out the window. <laughs> he had a really nasally voice with a bit of a lisp constantly trying to keep me away from his big sister, even as friends. Bat villain is Beard Cell's big sister, 17 years old, six foot one, and actually hot. Six foot one as a chick? She play volleyball or something? <laughs> like I'm honestly surprised that she's even related to Beard Cell in the slightest. Named as such because her dad named her after one of Batman's rogues. What could that be? Harley Quinn? Uh, Poison Ivy? It's probably Harley Quinn, right? <laughs> She's probably a lesbian, so if any of you are already expecting a romantic end, that's probably not happening. Oh, come on, OP. Take some artistic liberties, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You already called yourself a Chad. Go the whole nine. She mentioned having been recently dumped by a girl a week before Valentine's. Sad face. Uh-huh, so that's the cast list, and uh, here's the story. So to start with, on my first day at the new place, my parents have gone out to get some light bulbs, and my brother is asleep in his room. So I figured I'd go introduce myself to the new neighbors, because they look to be around my age, and yeah, I liked making friends. So right off the bat, something about this kid isn't sitting right with me. He's wearing really baggy black cargo shorts, a black Death Note t-shirt that hugs his sides a bit too tightly. You can actually see his fat rolls folding in. He's also wearing fingerless gloves with skeleton hands on the back. But there's no fedora. <laughs> but as this sub has taught me, it's not the fedora on the outside. It's the fedora on the inside there. Fedora. Well, wow, that's like a beautiful combination of both Moon Horse and Red X catchphrases. I'm into it. <laughs> so he's out on his front porch looking through some kind of card binder. I don't know what it was. I don't really care. Hi, I say, blissfully unaware of the trap that I'm about to get myself into. His first words, not something normal like hi or yo, but he says, <laughs> I bet they know more about that band than you. I was wearing a Slipknot shirt, and his breath, oh my god, his freaking breath. It smells like he ate onions and Dorito dust for breakfast. We're certainly checking all the boxes today, aren't we? <laughs> and I'm honestly confused at this point, so I just follow up with, I'm sorry, what? Apparently he doesn't take this as a cue to maybe take back what he says, or maybe say something normal as a follow up because he follows up with, yeah, I know you're kind, fake metalhead hipsters. And they only say they like metal to get with girls. <laughs> uh, honestly, that's a new one. Reddit had not prepared me for this. I can barely get out a confused, okay, before he finishes off with, just stay away from my sister. She deserves an intellectual, not some trendy pejorative. That pejorative bit kind of triggered me because I'm bi, so I basically just went home after that. Oh, now that is kind of a sad story, isn't it? You were so excited to meet the new neighbors and then you did. Tell you what, good fences make good neighbors. <laughs> so like an hour goes by, and I hear a knock on the door. I didn't hear a car, so I'm assuming that it's little old beard cell coming by to bug me again, but no, it's his older, normal sister. 
Hi, I'm Bat Villain. I'm Beard Cell's big sister. I wanted to drop off a basket of muffins as a welcome to the neighborhood kind of thing. I'm sorry about Beard Cell. He can be such a jerk sometimes. But hey, what can you do? <laughs> a basket of muffins. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure she did. I'll skip the conversation that we had because it isn't relevant to the story. Except for one minor thing that Bat Villain says to me after I asked her, what is Beard Cell's deal? Her reply honestly kind of made me respect Beard Cell a little bit. Oh, he just wants to keep me safe and all that. I don't really need him to always be there, but it's sweet that he wants to look out for me. End of day one. Honestly, I can see it. Part of me is rooting for Beard Cell at this point. So day two, it's Monday. I'm tired as hell, and as soon as I get home from school, I have to help move furniture into the house. <sighs> I'm carrying a seven foot tall bed post. It's actually hollowed out, so it's kind of light, but the base is really heavy. And then I suddenly hear that neck beardy voice shout, You're doing it wrong! Let a man like me show you how to do it. <sighs> he said that. Seriously. Just try to picture a five foot five orb trying to lift a seven foot tall bedpost. Not happening. <laughs> oh Lord. OP, how did you get so strong? <laughs> so I ignore him and just keep carrying stuff in. So he says, what? Can't stand my superiority? And that last one earned him a slap on the back of the head from Bat Villain because he was embarrassing himself and her right out here in public view. He keeps staring at me really intensely whenever I step outside, so I decide to try and piss him off by waltzing over and talking to Bat Villain, who was currently sitting on the porch reading Red Sun, which is a good comic. By the way, pick it up if you haven't read it. I don't do comic books. <laughs> we start a conversation, but of course, Beard Cell has to interrupt every so often to prove his superiority. Gonna switch up the dialogue style because I'm lazy. OP, oh, hey, I love that comic. Bat Villain, yeah, me too. It's really interesting. Beard Cell, who cares? It's not even canon anyways. OP, so, still cool. Beard Cell, oh, whatever. You'll say anything to get into her pants. <laughs> uh, bat Villain, oh, shut up, you little brat. He's the one that started the conversation. Just screw off and leave us alone. I don't need you looking out for me. I can make my own choices. Beard Cell, no, you can't. I, I need to protect you. You're just a slave to your hormones. <laughs> <laughs> you just sleep to your hormones. Uh, that's classic, dude. <laughs> I love that. I was I was iffy about this whole story up until that point. <laughs> Beard cell. What a Chad. <laughs> I want to say that something awesome followed, but Bat Villain just said, "You're a beta," and stormed off into the house. Really, seventeen-year-old girl. Reading comics, calling other dudes a beta, and she's relatively attractive. <laughs> I'll know about any of this, man. But we're gonna let it keep going, cause cause I really do like Beard Cell. <laughs> Beard Cell blames me, says something like, "Yeah, this is all your fault, you idiot," and heads inside. And I just go home. End of day two. Tuesday slow. I go home and see Beard Cell playing cards on his porch with some other kid. I really don't care, so I just go inside and chill. Beard Cell must have lost, though, because all the way from upstairs, I heard him yell, No fear! That card's too OP! It's Blue Eyes White Dragon, bro. I built my whole deck around it. <laughs> yeah, he's a sore loser. Who would have guessed? Everyone. Literally anyone who knows what a neckbeard is. This, however, is the day that I realized that my balcony is actually connected to Bat Villain's balcony. So we started talking at night and hatch a genius plan to drive Beard Cell insane. End of day three. Your balconies are connected? What the hell does that mean? <laughs> we had a, uh, a slide that goes around in circles and it ends up in the same pool at the bottom of my house that I didn't know we have. You want a believable story? Um, call each other on the telephone, okay? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so now it's Wednesday, time to start the plan. Things move fast around here, you see. I go home, and Beard Cell is there waiting for me. Oh, by the way, if any of you are wondering where are my parents during all of this, they're off working, and I have a driver to take me home. But any hoozles. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you're killing me. You're killing me inside. I step out of the car, and just like clockwork, he trots over to me, looks me dead in the eye, and says, Stay the hell away from my sister! It went through your Facebook, and you're not a fake metalhead. I'll give you that. <laughs> and this is where it gets really cringy. Are you sure? <laughs> I've been cringing my way through this whole thing. Of course you are. Let's go. But you're worse. You're a Chad jock who maltreats all his girlfriends. Cue the sirens. It's a beard cell in the wild. Now, I don't really know what he's trying to say, so I make the mistake of asking him what the hell he just said. Uh, I saw your photos running marathons for charity, you jerk. Martial arts. Lol, I thought you did martial arts, Beardy, but whatever. Uh, I bet you didn't even write that poem yourself. Oh, hell no. You did not diss my work. I mean, is it really a diss? Because he thought it was so good that you couldn't have made it yourself. I'll take that. <laughs> the only thing saving him from my foot right up his ace is his big sister running over and fawning all over me. This is phase one of our plan. Bat villain acts insanely flirty whenever Beard Cell could see us just to rustle his jimmies. After about 10 minutes of some really cheesy stuff, Beard Cell leaves and probably makes a post on 4chan about his big sister being a whore for a chad. End of day four. <laughs> God, dude. Uh, what is the point of the plan? Just to be a jerk? You want to start a fight with him? I don't understand. Thursday, we pull out the big guns. I don't know why, but apparently Bat Villain's mom had some Victoria's Secret bags lying around. Okay, maybe I can guess why. So I had her do two things. Fill the bags and lay them on her bed and take a photo and make sure that Beard Cell sees her doing it. Boy, this is getting convoluted. <laughs> Two, put the now empty bags in the trash in full view of Beard Cell. This apparently works because Bat Villain texts me to let me know that Beard Cell came into her room and insisted on looking through her closet and after being denied, gave her a lecture on the dangers of sleeping around. End of day five. Okay, now he's getting into like weirdly protective big brother territory, I guess. But then again, maybe not, you know? There is a thing or two to be said on the dangers of sleeping around. <laughs> Whatever. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are basically one continuous flow because weekend. On Friday, I have a really cheap pizza dinner on the balcony with Bat Villain. Oh, did you light candles? Wow. This is ritzy, isn't it? <laughs> I have the pizza delivered to Bat Villain, and when Beard Cell inevitably asks for some, she replies, No, sorry, this is for me and OP. Then she heads to her room, steps onto the balcony, and locks it. Locks herself on the balcony? Nah, bro, that's not how locks work. <laughs> Beard Cell actually starts knocking on the balcony begging her to reconsider the mistake you're making. He's a Chad. He'll beat you. You deserve someone like me. Whoa, whoa. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, this story has certainly had some twists and turns, hasn't it? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Low-key, is anyone else getting a Freudian vibe from this dude? That ain't even low-key, OP. That is quite high-key, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, so we finish the pizza, and she goes back inside. Saturday, I spend an hour in Bat Villain's living room, reading comics with her, and using my crappiest pickup lines. Stuff like, this artwork is good, but... I prefer the masterpiece in front of me. Ooh, 
God, it's like getting punched in the gut. <laughs> uh, thanks, I hate it. Beard Cell actually throws an empty Coke can at my head after this, so I decided to leave because I don't want to escalate it quite yet. Wh why? What's the end game here? Can anybody answer that? <laughs> Sunday, I just run through a sprinkler to look all sweaty. <laughs> and then when Beard Cell comes out, I text Bat Villain to run over with a towel and act all starry eyed and dumb. This works. And Beard Cell comes over, yanks the towel away from his sister, and stomps on it. Perfect. End of weekend. Jesus Christ. I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> this is how you want to spend your life? Maybe it's time to get a new hobby. So, Monday and Tuesday are quiet days that put Beard Cell into a false sense of security leading up to Wednesday. Now, what is Wednesday? Valentine's Day, a.k.a. International Bone Day, whoa! <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what you call it when you're 16 and aren't getting any. <laughs> and coincidentally enough, it was also the opening night of Black Panther. Oh, snap! We live in Indonesia, so sometimes we get movies earlier. Now Beard Cell, of course, is gonna go see Black Panther while his parents head out to dinner, which leaves Bat Villain at home by herself. I don't know if I like where this is going. Just wait. Story's gonna take like another horrible turn. <laughs> it's super twisty. So Beard Cell's movie starts at 7.30. So at 7.15, I get to Bat Villain's house to enact the final phase of our plan. The rustling. <laughs> Did all the phases have names? We skipped over those. What we do is we both get on her bed and pull the blanket up to our necks so it looks like we're naked. And we ruffle up our hair a bit to sell the illusion. And at 7.20, right before the theater opens up and he can go get a good seat, Bat Villain takes a selfie of us with messy hair lying down in her bed and snaps it to him with the words, Thanks for letting me have the house to myself, little bro. <laughs> I don't know if this has gone too far, man. Beard Cell's gonna kick down the door with an axe, and uh, I, I don't know I could be fully against him at that point. 720, snap sent. 721, snap opened. What follows is a bunch of angry messages that are honestly the usual, minus a few highlights. How did you do this? After I spent so much time defending you. Make sure he stays. I want to have words with him. What the hell? You, you, you're such a whore. You slept with a Chad jock? Tell that beta that the alpha is on his way home. <laughs> Are we gonna have a beard fight? I hope we're gonna have a beard fight. Eventually he calls and Bat Villain passes the phone to me. Now this could have been taking it too far, but I said, hey man, thanks for leaving us the house on Party Demon, whoa! And I hung up. <laughs> I make my way back to my balcony and play the waiting game. He's taking a grab to get home, which is like the Indonesian Uber, so that might take a while. Grab was also in Thailand. I think Grab is in the Philippines too. Uber didn't make it to Asia. <laughs> Eventually, Beard Cell comes home, and I can see he's all dressed in black with the exception of a beige trench coat. His face is red, and he's clutching a fedora like his life depended on it. Hey, there's the fedora. Now we checked all the boxes. <laughs> I wasn't around for this next bit, so this is all as described to me by Bat Villain, so I'm trusting her to get it right. Now, since I left the house by crossing over the balconies, he's really confused when their maid says that Bat Villain's been in her room for the past hour and no one came through the front door. When he gets upstairs, he's yelling and is probably in shock when he notices that the bed is still neat and made. And there's no evidence at all of any frick frack. <laughs> no cod the wrappers, no Victoria's Secret stuff lying around, not even a loose sock. Eventually, after standing there red-faced and open-mouthed for a few minutes, he lectured her for worrying him and for making him miss Black Panther. Well, that is the greatest tragedy of all, isn't it? <laughs> TLDR, 
Neckbeard wrestles my jimmies and I make him think I wrestled his sister and he misses Black Panther. And I am an evil genius. I mean, you sound more like just kind of a douche, but 16 years old, I, I see it, you know? <laughs> I hope five years later, you're not looking at it the same way. And yes, there is an update, a sequel, and we'll, we'll throw it in here, because why not? So let's head over there right now. Beard Cell 2. Chad comes to lunch. Like an actual Chad, or are you just calling yourself Chad again? It's getting really sad, dude. <laughs> Okay, since a bunch of y'all wanted more, I'll share a story that happened today. See, after the whole rustling from last time, I figured I'd leave Beard Cell alone for a couple of days to plan a better prank. No strike that, to just let him chill out, you know? <laughs> well, today, Bat Villain invited me to lunch at her place because he had a friend over, and that friend was weird. Also, a minor thing I wanted to share, but has nothing to do with the stories. After the whole prank, Batman told me that Beard Cell apparently added me to his list of mortal enemies at spot number 16 for ruining his sister. But yeah, I don't really know. Anyways, without further ado, let's go! I don't know, maybe it's just me, but 16 mortal enemies, that seems like way too many mortal enemies, you know? <laughs> You're supposed to have like one, maybe two max. Anyways. Characters are the same as last time, plus one new dude, that other kid, or T-O-K for short. He was the dude that Beard Cell played cards with in the last story. Skinny, really bad acne on his forehead and cheeks, and I swear I saw something on his chin. He's actually a little bit taller than our Beard Cell, probably five foot eight. I don't really know. I'm eyeballing it based on how tall I am. No neck beard, but has a few stray hairs on his chin that could charitably be called whiskers. <laughs> really greasy black hair that's styled in a bowl cut. And remember the guy from the looking for an internet girlfriend video? His voice was basically like that, but with more of an Indo accent. And of course, his fashion sense was just complete garbage. He was wearing a bunch of neon bracelets, a blue My Little Pony t-shirt, and a pair of black trip pants. I mean, maybe he's just a candy kid. I hear that ravers dress crappily on purpose. <laughs> so moving on, today is a pretty chilly day, as most Saturdays should be, except for when I go outside. Normally I'd wanna stay inside all day and sleep on the couch, but I have cats, which aren't allowed inside because my mom has allergies, so I go outside a lot to feed them and hug them. It's usually an uneventful thing, except today, Beard sells out on his porch with that other kid, and he sees me cuddling a cat, and for some reason, he quietly tells his buddy that he's that Chad jerk that ruined my sister. Oh, my salty little beard. How wrong you are. That other kid's response, however, blew me away. He says, <laughs> Hey, look, that vag has a vag, while pointing directly at me. Right. Well, that's enough outside time for me today. <laughs> Except Bat Villain actually hears that second call and comes out to one, pet a floof, and two, invite me to lunch at her house. I'll be honest, I'm taken by surprise regarding this invite since I assumed that we would be leaving the beard alone for today. I mean, the beard still hasn't even done anything. You should have left him alone the entire time. <laughs> He's just a protective big brother. Ain't nothing wrong with that. OP needs to give some serious thought to his motivations in life. OP says, uh, aren't we leaving Beard Cell alone this weekend? Bat villain, OP, just come over to my place because that little weirdo has this strange thing for me and I need a fake boyfriend to get him to buzz off. OP, can't you tell your parents to like give him the boot? Bat villain. Eh, they're out today, and the maid doesn't like to get involved in our social crap, so just help me out. I've got Satay inside. Satay? Say no more. I'm sold. What is Satay? Well, <laughs> Google says, Southeast Asian dish of skewered and grilled meat served with a sauce. I just call it barbecue because I ain't fancy like that. <laughs> Anyways, I basically nod a quick yes to Bat Villain, put my cat down, and follow her into the living room. Here's the room layout for reference. Wow, we going deep with this story. Oh wait, not really, that diagram's terrible. 
<laughs> so immediately, as soon as I walk in, that other kid does a full 180 from earlier and acts like he has never seen me. That other kid, who's this mysterious fellow? A boyfriend? Bat villain? Sure, let's go with that. Isn't that right, OP? She actually does an exaggerated cheek pinch, much to the chagrin of Beard Cell and that other kid. That other kid? But he's white! What could you possibly find appealing about a mindless thug like that? Okay, wow, you r little dude. Bat villain? Well, he's sweet and nerdy, and we have similar interests, and he's hella handsome. Oh, stop, you flatterer. She really said all those things for real. <laughs> that other kid? Clearly you're not getting it. What does he have that I don't? This second story is just an excuse for OP to talk about how cool and amazing he is, right? <laughs> uh, honestly, Bat Villain's reply to this catches me off guard, so I had to stifle a laugh. Bat Villain? Well, he stands a few inches taller than most men. Nice. Real subtle there, Bat Villain. Oh, like his ding dong. <laughs> she grabs my arm and pulls me to the couch and then beard cell. Hey, get your hands off that filthy Chad. OP, no worry, shorty. I'm clean. <laughs> Don't worry, shorty. <laughs> Bat villain, just let us eat in peace. We eat in uncomfortable silence. There's a few angry glares thrown my way every so often, and I move just a little bit closer, just to make him mad. I decide to, like, feed one of the Satai sticks to Bat Villain. This pisses off that other kid and Beard Cell to no end. Eventually, Bat Villain has to use the facilities, and that is when that other kid and Beard Cell tear into me. Beard Cell, back off! My sister deserves an intellectual, a uh, nice guy. Someone that could treat her like a queen. OP, right. So you want her to date you? I saw a bunch of comments saying he probably wanted to, so I figured it might throw him off a little bit. How did you not put together the fact that he wanted to, OP? You're just like, oh no, there's some Freudian vibes. It's like, no, he outright said it in the last part. <laughs> uh, an intellectual, he's not. Beard Cell, I think I can hear the gears turning in his head. No, someone like that other kid. That other kid? Yeah, and you broke the rules anyway. I had dibs on her. I honestly choked on my food because of how off guard that caught me. OP, you do realize that dibs isn't a thing, right? That other kid? Whatever. <laughs> if you stand between me and Bat Villain, I'll take you out like a knight fighting a dragon. <laughs> uh, she needs a nice guy. <laughs> uh, OP. So, a nice guy who doesn't respect her decisions. Thank you, Reddit, for arming me with all the responses that I needed. Hey, sure thing. Gotcha, fam. When's that royalty check getting mailed? <laughs> <laughs> he honestly has no response to this, and thankfully, before he can muster one up, Bat Villain comes back and invites me to her room. Now, obviously, we aren't doing anything shady, but Beard Cell and that other kid think that we're up to something. We can sort of see their shadows moving around through the gap under the door as they're trying to listen in. So, in a moment of inspired genius, Bat Villain yells, Privacy, please! and puts on this song. Sparks fly. It's like electricity. We'll cut that in a bit, but I'm not listening to more than five seconds of it. <laughs> I'm not even laughing at this point. I'm like silently wheezing because this is far too funny. Unfortunately, we also forgot to lock the door and this bit is the real kicker. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. Okay, good. <laughs> Beard Cell and that other kid actually burst into the room, ready to freak out about Bat Villain being seduced to the dark side by a Chad. And Bat Villain, not wanting to ruin the illusion, and thereby ruin any hope of scaring that other kid off, she decides to kiss me. Ooh! <laughs> At least, that's what it looks like. 
You know that trick when you lean in in drama class to fake a kiss on stage? If you don't, here's how it works. The person who initiates the kiss puts their hand on the cheek that faces away from the audience and puts their thumb over both of your mouths at an angle that the audience can't see. This makes it look like you're kissing, but saves both actors the trouble of doing something like that on stage. Knowing me, I'm gonna stick my thumb in a mouth because I'm a freak though. <laughs> <laughs> they see what they think is a moment of passion, and I can't really describe the noise that that other kid made. For those of you that browse r slash green text, the noise was basically <laughs> An actual person went re. God, I wish I could say I was making this up. That other kid is red-faced, or as red-faced as you can get when you have a tan. Oh, sick burn! Maybe, I don't know, what, what is? <laughs> and Beard Cell is just in shock, really. Bat Villain seizes the moment to basically tear him a new one for uh, killing the moment. Bat Villain, oh my God, do you have any understanding of privacy and personal space? Go back to your own rooms, you red-pilled a-holes. I made a choice and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> this is so fake. <laughs> Uh, that other kid, uh, uh, but he's bat villain. I don't care what you think he is. He's a real nice guy. He treats me with respect and doesn't come barging into my room just because I left the door unlocked. Beard cell, but we're trying to protect you. Bat villain, I don't need your protection. Now get out. And if you tell mom and dad about this, I'll show them the disgusting things you keep under your bed. Side note. I asked after this, and apparently Beard Cell keeps uh, illicit underage comics under his bed. I feel sick. Got it? Oh, God. I defended him. Oh, God! <laughs> I need to wash my hands. Oh, God. I do feel sick. Thanks so much. Can this just be another case of everybody sucks here? Oh. Thank God it's almost over. <laughs> they both nod and leave. After that, Bat Villain spends like five minutes apologizing for springing the stage kiss on me like that. And after that's all settled, I decide to go home because I've had my fill of euphoria for one day. On the way out of the house though, I left through the front door this time, Beard Cell and that other kid basically block me from using the door. I'm about ready to shove past him until Beard Cell hits me with a bomb. You're on thin ice, buddy. The next time you come here, you're dead. He then does an exaggerated knuckle cracking thing, which looks super stupid because his fingers are basically Vienna sausages. And that brings us to the end of the story. Bat Villain says she has more stories about that other kid and Beard Cell from over the years, so let me know if you want to hear them. TLDR, filthy Chad, goes to the home of an intellectually superior genius. The red-pilled Alpha and his friend kill the mood and then threaten OP. So, do we finally get a neckbeard fight at the end of all this? I don't know. There's one more part. We're going to stuff it in this video because why not? <laughs> and we'll have to see how it goes. Beard Cell 3. And question mark? I mean, he has lots of other posts, but this is the end of the Beard Cell Saga as far as I could tell. So here are the previous stories, all in this video. Characters, the same as the first story, plus another new guy, Ed Jordan's my little brother. 14 years old, 5 foot 11. If you think I'm a Chad, I don't. You should see him. I guess I will. <laughs> He's on the school basketball team and actually owns a few pairs of Air Jordans, hence the name. Somewhere between pudgy and muscular because as much as he exercises, his dietary habits are garbage. And he's more popular with the girls in his grade than I'm comfortable with. Please just, just stay a child. Yes, the 16 year old wants you to stay a child, can't you see? <laughs> uh, hilarious. It's your boy! Please don't do that. Hi, y'all. I recently had my stitches removed so I could finally go back to living life and leaving the house. First stop, Bat Villain's house. Oh, wait. Little Beardy's threat to me. Next time you come here, you're dead. 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 Right. 
Well, that puts a dampener on things. I still don't know what the stitches are all about. I didn't dig that much into the deep lore, I guess. <laughs> so, during my extended bed rest, I texted Bat Villain a lot, and she told me that apparently since my last visit, Beard Cell had been using a wooden sword to beat up a punching bag with a photo of me taped to it. <laughs> Uh, I'm honestly more surprised that there's a punching bag in their house for him to tape a photo to. I mean, that's the magic of a creative medium, isn't it? We could give him a swimming pool right now if we want. <laughs> now, I may not know a lot about a lot of things, but you don't mess around when an angry person wants to beat you over the head with a stick. So, did I give up? Run and hide? Hell no. Loophole abuse. Bam, bam, bam. I still don't completely understand the motivation here, but <laughs> it just continues. Beardy threatened me if I ever came over to their house. He never said that I couldn't meet with Bat Villain anywhere else, so this story takes place over three days. Friday. Well, I just had my stitches removed for something, and my doctor says I'm clear to leave the house, so I want to celebrate with a friend, except all my other friends are busy. Then I remembered that I live next door to a pretty cool friend, so I figured that as soon as I get home, I decide to hang out with Bat Villain because we could have fun without triggering the beard, right? Well, as soon as I get home, what do I see? Beardy, sitting in his front garden. And I want to say meditating, because that seems exactly like the weeby kind of thing he'd do, but he was shifting around quite a lot. I don't know, dude. Meditating's pretty lit, honestly. <laughs> Anyway, I figured that now was a pretty good time to hang out, so I text Bat Villain to hang out at my place because she said she wanted to play with my cats one day. Side note, my family repurposed the back area into a kitten play area, so now they're at the back instead of the front. Oh, and because I remember someone asking for pics of them, here you go. Now, as soon as Bat Villain steps out and says hi to me, that's when Beardy snaps up. What the hell was the non sequitur about kitten play area? Okay, whatever. <laughs> Beard Cell says, Where do you think you're taking her? OP, to my place? To play with the cats? Because we're not soulless creatures and we love animals. Beard Cell, No, you're gonna stay home while I deal with you. OP, what? You mean beat me over the head with your stick? Bat Villain told me about that. Beard Cell, It's not a stick! Dig! It's an authentic Boken, and I will defeat you with it. I told you next time you came here, you'd be dead. You're really gonna bludgeon me to death with a piece of wood? I guess it could happen. <laughs> I don't think he's got the stamina for that. Now, dear readers, in all honesty, originally, I was just gonna play with the cats and gorge on junk food with Bat Villain without ever triggering Beard Cell again. That is, until Bat Villain points out a delicious little loophole to abuse. Bat Villain, well, if we're at his place and not here, gestures at her house, you told him to never come over to our place. Never said I couldn't go to his place. Now, I want to defuse the situation because maybe I can appeal to his inborn love of cats. Everyone on the internet loves cats. Nope. <laughs> OP, just come over and meet the cats, dude. It'll be fun. Beard Cell, no, I refuse to be in the presence of such filthy beasts. Any true man would keep hounds. God, it's so true. I want to go to bat for you again, Beard Cell, but I know what you keep under your bed, so you're going up against the wall. We have to feed you to the hounds. <laughs> uh, well, he just insulted my cats and my masculinity, which... To be fair, is fair game, because I am very effeminate, like, I wear these around. Just don't get one with flowers on it, you'll be alright. <laughs> but still, I am offended on behalf of my cats. And now, armed with the knowledge of my little loophole, I decide to maybe mess with him just a little. Not as badly as the last two times, just spending time with the sister in order to upset him. Well, my plan was to be low-key, but Bat Villain sort of escalated it. You see, when she got home later on, she was apparently greeted with this. Beard Cell. So, you're done playing with that hatchet face, Chad. <laughs> hatchet face. 
I like it. There you gotta understand. Bat villain has been putting up with him for years with no way to fire back at his BS. As she put it when she described this to me, screw your plan. I wanna have fun. Yeah, so maybe she didn't really have an airtight justification, but it's too late to do anything about it. So enjoy my very rough translation of their conversations. Bat villain. Oh, we did more than play. <laughs> Jesus, dude. I am growing so weary. <laughs> Beard cell. Oh yeah? What does that mean? Yes, because a neckbeard of all people can't detect a double entendre, right? <laughs> Bat villain. He didn't just play with me. He like totally messed me up. Not that you'd never know what that's like in cell. She said to just imagine she's spitting that word out, but she didn't really demonstrate or imitate how she did it. She said, just imagine. Oh yeah, I'm imagining. I got a good imagination. <laughs> Beard cell. You whore! <laughs> this I can hear from my house because he said it so goddamn loud. Not gonna lie, I'm not sure if it's better or worse without the context. We didn't need any of this context. This entire story is just literary master isn't it? <laughs> Bat villain, you're just mad because you're not getting any mic drop. Well, she said she would have mic dropped if she had a mic. That's why I always carry one around in my pocket. <laughs> Bat villain says they didn't speak for the rest of the night. So let's skip to Saturday. Saturday, all oh, the weekend. Sleeping in, staying up, easy life. For a 16 year old at least <laughs> except for the fact that beard cell decided that he might try to turn my brother you see at some point beard cell introduced himself to my brother while i was out of the house and couldn't keep him safe nah not really my brother can protect himself just fine you read his intro thingy why does beard cell think he can turn him well according to my brother his sales pitch for joining the war on chad was basically that they were both 14 years old and suffering under the boots of Chad and Stacy, as well as insulting me with stuff like, that guy must put you down all the time, right? We don't put each other down, we banter. Admit it, that guy totally blocks your ding dong, bro. So not true. My little brother has had more girlfriends than me already. Jesus Christ, kids, slow down. Eh, a pejorative like him deserves to be taken down a few pegs. Wait, is saying peg in that context also a pejorative? I'm not actually sure. <laughs> and that is about the point where he done goofed. You see, my brother is very supportive of me being LGBT, and he hates homophobes. Tell that dude that I'm a pejorative, uh, not a good idea. As my brother describes it, he ruined Beard Cell's beardy life. See, remember that card binder that I mentioned way back in the first story? Turns out the Beard Cell happened to be holding it when he tried talking to my brother. My brother was apparently outside pumping his bike tires at the time and Beardy happened to be flipping through his cards. And walking across the street? Question <laughs> mark. My brother being, well, him, decided his best course of action was to simply pack up the pump, clip it to his bike, get the water bottle off his bike, unscrew it to drink, and after a nice refreshing sip, he threw the rest of it onto Beardy's card binder before pedaling away like a maniac. It's a jerk move, I'll give him that. According to Bat Villain, Beard Cell spent the rest of the day in his room inspecting the cards to make sure that they weren't ruined. I mean, presumably they weren't. That's the point of a binder, right? <laughs> You'll be fine. Some of the ones on the top will get wet. But really, this is some 14-year-old kid stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Finally, Sunday. So, at this point, I feel like garbage. Because I feel like I've just been antagonizing this guy. You have. Objectively, you have. <laughs> so I talk to Bat Villain, and we organize an apology attempt. And maybe try to talk with him about sorting out all our problems in a proper discussion. See, Beard Cell agrees to meet with us, so we all meet up at his house. I sit next to Bat Villain on the sofa across from Beard Cell, and we try to talk with him. Keyword being try. I don't really blame him, but Beard Cell didn't trust us at all. Once again, 
Most of what Bat Villain and Beard Cell are saying is just rough translations because I'm not great with Bahasa. Also, because I'm too lazy to type it out, I'll just preface this by saying that I got Bat Villain to fess up about our prank when he went to see Black Panther. And one more thing, it's worth noting that Beard Cell never knew that Bat Villain was LGBT. Her parents eventually found out, but Bat Villain said that she would tell Beard Cell herself. Yes, nobody knows this secret about my deepest, darkest self. I'm just gonna tell the weird neighbor boy. <laughs> what? <laughs> OP. Look, we've been jerks and bullies to you, but I'm really hoping that we can bury the hatchet. I'll be honest, it all started out as a prank, and we took it way further than it needed to go. I'm sorry, Bat Villain. Yeah, man, I was just like fed up with your whole protection thing or whatever. And maybe I figured that this prank would scare you out of it. We really are sorry, OP. Please, can we start again, Beard Cell? <sighs> well, I accept your, while pointing at Bat Villain, apology because we're related. But this pejorative doesn't deserve it. And this is where everything went south, Bat Villain. Okay, what the hell is your problem? We're trying to be nice. You complain about not having friends, and when we try, you refuse to take it. Beard Cell, I'm throwing it back because he is an abomination in the eyes of God. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, sure. Now you're all about your religion, right, Bat Villain? So you think all LGBT is unnatural, Beard Cell? Yeah, <laughs> Bat Villain. <laughs> Screw it, I'm pansexual. I like guys, girls, trans, you name it. And I've never been unnatural before with girls in my room. So F you. And she stormed off after that. And I left the entire situation because it was just too tense. Today is Monday and Bat Villain is still really upset about the whole thing. I've been trying to talk to her and get her to calm down because there's really nothing wrong with her. The whole unnatural thing really upset her. And now I feel like trash because I sort of started the whole thing. I'm still speaking to Bat Villain because she doesn't want to lose me as a friend because she really enjoys the solidarity, but I'm gonna try to avoid Beard Cell. Well, as much as I can when he lives right next door. Sorry to end on such a down note. If y'all still want Bat Villain has stories about that other kid and Beard Cell from over the years that she doesn't mind me sharing, but this is probably the last Beard Cell story. I'll try to update probably if something happens that's noteworthy. TLDR, things get taken too far. We apologize. An already strained sibling relationship is probably ruined. Yeah, and you did that. I, I don't really see your end game here, OP. <laughs> you destroyed your relationship with your neighbor for seemingly no good reason, except for teaching him a lesson about being overprotective. He was being overprotective. I'll give you that but you didn't really even have to get involved. Ah, I don't know. There's one more of these, okay? <laughs> I just went back and looked and found it, and so I'm gonna stuff that in here as well. Why not? So here we go. Beard Cell 4. All women are promiscuous. Trigger warning for violence. Wow, I didn't expect to be making one of these again. I'm back with a funky fresh tail. Please don't do that of the beard cell next door. <laughs> so recently one of my cats gave birth to two very small and chubby bundles of happy. So I went over to Bat Villain's place to show her photos of them and also to just hang out since I haven't really done that much lately because of school stuff. Supposed to be a chill time, except it wasn't because God hates me and is apparently punishing me with beard cell. If you want to know who the stars are, go back, read the first post in the beard cell saga. I'll set the scene. It's a chill Sunday afternoon. The beards are singing. You're in a good mood and you got some new kittens. So you decide to share the joy with your friend by taking a bunch of photos and heading over to just chill and get some FaceTime. You couldn't text her the photos. You couldn't have her slide to your house. You really don't learn, do you, OP? <laughs> Sidebar, I went to her house instead of bringing her to mine because my parents don't like the idea of me having girls over while they're out. I think the last part of that statement's the operative part. They're out. Who who cares? <laughs> that was my plan for the day. So I stroll up to her house and knock on the door and nothing. No one answers. 
I'm about ready to give up when suddenly the door opens. Am I face to face with what's basically an Amazon? No, her little brother is there, wearing jorts and an MLP shirt. He smells like he hasn't showered in days, and he's got bags under his eyes. I was hoping that he'd mellowed out since last time and was willing to let me in, but he just gives me a quick once over and says, Beard Cell, get out of here, pejorative. Then he slams the door in my face. Ah, cool, dude. I just call Bat Villain to let me in, and as soon as she lets me in, Beardy's already protesting. I decide to tune him out, but I have some notable highlights. Uh, what the hell? Get him out of here! I'm trying to help you, you promiscuous girl! Uh... <laughs> if you're gonna beg him for real, you're gonna be disappointed! What the hell? Why do you talk to your sister like this? And more importantly, how does Beard Cell know how OP is in the sack, hmm? <laughs> that last one sort of made me throw up in my mouth a little bit, and it made Bat Villain snap and start shouting him down so hard that he ran up to his room. I'll skip ahead a little to when he comes back down, which was admittedly not very long after, while I was showing Bat Villain some photos of all the cats. She swipes up a little too far and ends up on a photo of me and my friend at a party. Party demon, whoa! Now, <laughs> it's worth stating that the friend in the pic is a female and also very attractive. After seeing that photo, Bat Villain takes my phone and starts to tease me about it, which is where things go very wrong. Apparently, while Bat Villain and I were chatting, Beard Cell had snuck downstairs and was watching us the whole time. And hearing her tease me about a girl that I'm friends with apparently triggered the absolute hell out of him because he snapped. He snatched my phone from Bat Villain and actually started to look through my entire camera roll. Now I'm sort of sentimental, so I take a lot of photos with friends, quite a few of whom just so happen to be women, so we definitely have a problem here. After swiping through and looking at what I imagine were all the pictures I took with my friends, he throws the phone at my chest so hard that I cough, and he loses it. Beard Cell, I knew it! This pejorative is a womanizer! Look at all those makeup abusing whores in the photos! He, he's been banging them all! He, he's just gonna load up his coob in you and ditch you, you promiscuous girl! God, that is such a freaking nasty thing to say! To your sister, Bat Villain. Calm down, kid. Men and women can be friends without anything going on. Beard Cell. Bull crap. All women are promiscuous. At this point, Bat Villain stands up to try and calm him down, and then he really messes up. And I mean, really, really messes up. Bat Villain tries to stand close to him and speak calmly to try and cool him down, but Beard Cell isn't having it. He pushes her into the coffee table so hard that the glass breaks and she cuts her arm on a stray shard. Oh crap. Now those of you expecting Bat Villain to put up some fight are going to be disappointed because this is reality. She just breaks down and starts yelling because holy crap, her own brother just laid hands on her and hurt her. Do you not take any responsibility for this at all, OP? Do you not realize that you're like dumping gas on a fire here? Yes, granted, he shouldn't have done that, but maybe you shouldn't be here either. I don't know, dude. I just don't know how to feel about it. So I'm not going to fight Beard Cell and escalate the situation, so I just help Bat Villain up so I can bring her over to my house so my maid can clean up the wound and get it bandaged. The maid also sees who comes in and out of the house, so she's like a maid slash doctor slash butler. <laughs> does, she, does she live on site? So Beard Cell and Bat Villain's maid is panicking and phoning their parents. I'm freaking out because there's a lot of blood and Bat Villain is angrily yelling at Beard Cell. Normal people would be realizing the gravity of the situation at this point, but not Beard Cell. He just piles on and yells the one thing that nobody should ever say to anybody. You deserved it. Bat Villain actually breaks down crying and I end up rushing her out of the house and away from the toxic situation there. But on the way out, Beard Cell actually kept yelling at us. 
God, he is indefensible. But so is OP. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like anybody here. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Thank you very much. Bat villain ended up waiting at my house for her parents to come. And when they did, apparently Beard Cell locked himself up in his room. Many words were said and they've realized that they've been enabling him. He's currently grounded and is not allowed in the same room as Bat Villain. Apparently, they might actually send him off to a boarding school or try sending him to live with some other relatives in Indonesia. This was a depressing story. Sorry to end it on such a down note. TLDR, go to chill with Neckbeard's sister. Beard hurts her. Family relationship is now actually 100% damaged. I don't know what to say, man. You couldn't leave well enough alone. Everybody in this story makes me sad. And there's absolutely no reason for everything that went on. But it is what it is. Thank God it's wrapped now. Not everything gets a pretty little bow on it, but I couldn't help but think that this could have gone, like, way differently if, if anybody was acting rationally. <sighs> I don't know. I hope you enjoyed it, friends. Like, comment, subscribe. It's super, super long. Follow me on all the things. I would appreciate that. I'd also like to thank my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous channel members and Patreon patrons. Yes, indeed. So thank you to Mute, Abe Wells, That One Gay Cop, Valley Eyed Crane, Glitching Out Gaming, Cellwing666, Samantha, or Gaming Steve, Vladimir Dragonov, Sean Cantwell, John Indoors, Train Boy, Sheza, Angel Dark, Bedazzled Misery, Skylar Rain, The Fez Wearer, Heaven Sent 777, Robert Thibodeau, Grim's Tribe, Tooth Plushy, Cory Arts, Florentic Waver, Dungeon Bat, Billy D, Robert Waits, Brandon Ashcraft, Phantom Danica, Skylar Morningstar, The Gypsy Barber, Fire Drake, Death's Flagship, and buy two, get one hand. Heading over to Patreon, we got... Ms. Black, Holly Owen, Robert Waits, Camille Sarah, Don Brigger Drake, Chris Fluxer, Captain Clown, Jerry Hong Kong, Ellipses, or Gaming Steve, Santa Jerry, Silent Revolver, Zathras 28, Jerry, the original Jerry, 211 Jerry, the two Jerrys, Zarfar Barkar, Destiny Piper, Jerry Shikitsune, and Franka Berry, Assassin Pug Jerry, Baby Jerry, Billy D, Bitch Gremlin, Blade the Hero, Chancellor Blue Kraken, Commander J Tank, Dirty Little Jerry, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lux, Dial, Aaron Era, Erratic Mechanic, Esparks 50, Frozen Over Studios, Fire Drake, Gizmo Jack, Hadrian BR, Irish Pirate, Iron Allo, Irradiated Jam, JM Coon, Jeremy Smith, Jerry Blacktail, Jukebox Jerry, with stars in his eyes, <laughs> Cuddly Kraken, Lady Italian Greyhound Dino, Lady in Awakening, Lauren Crow, Legitimate Girth, Lord Jerry O, Lukumex was a race car driver, like and subscribe, my lady Nix, Mad Monk, Melgar the Destroyer, Matter Factor, Needless King 89, Phantom of the Pines, Jerry Kinzen, Jerry Beth, Queens, Quaaludes, and Quagmires, Sarita the Lolita, Scarlet's Coven, Sergeant Gay Cop, Silo Wimp, Stephanie Goodner, Storm Jerry, Synaptic Boomstick, Taco Mao, Jamago, The Gypsy Barber, The Littlest Who, The One True Fusky, This isn't even my final beard, trying to find another mama to get back to the real world. Vanguard Angel VC3, Viking Jerry, Vladimir Dragonov, WikiTac, Comrade Mooney, Kira, not another Jerry, but he is dope. Cage Alex 9, Red Wind, Bad Penny Lane, Carcass, Naga Viper, Third Stuff, Venom Jerry, Jace Christensen, One Leg Jerry's Return from Battle, A Normal Jerry, Thanks for washing up all the beards. Yeah, I do what I can. Amor Alder, Another Stupid Hipster, Atomic Jerry Zella, Bartender Keely, A Big Dead Wolf, Broken Spine, Horseradish, Cake Jerry, That's a different Jerry. <laughs> California Jerry Girl, Chikara the Panda, Koi does commissions now. Cryptid He's the Fawn, Jerry, Def to Tuna, Deku, Dwarfy Dude, Jerry Boo's Daughter, Ghost of Alpha, Green Jerry Ranger, Greymon365, Half Slavic Jerry in a tracksuit, He Cannot, Hydra Jerry, Solomon, Janitor Jerry, uh, I can't think of anything funny right now, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, <laughs> Gerald of Rivia, Jerry, but with two S's and a E, Jerry Springer, the results are in, you are not the neckbeard. <laughs> Jerry the Suzy Baka, Jerry's mom has got it going on. Jerry Roxers, Jerry role playing game, Kid Marvelous, Kitsikin, Mama Machia, CD. Maybe next time, Miss Duchess, Mr. Gasmack, Not Invisible Angel, Raptor Art, Seldom Dark, Snary, Spoony the Rogue, Spoopy Scary, Jerry Ton, Techno Dubs, they call me Jerry Two Knives. This is purely a mercantile transaction. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. To Infinity Jerry and beyond! Tokyo Bird, Unkale, Vaughn, you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve a Coors Light. Proud sponsor of Red X, cringe responsibly. <laughs> uh, it's perfect. HMT Mayor always, always killing it. 
throws two liter Mountain Dew. Grow my neck beard, grow. It's Jerry time, holds Red X Morpher. Hygiene, it's Jerry time, hold Red X Morpher. Humility, and thank you, of course, to my $1 patrons as well. You guys, always beautiful, love you, see you tomorrow. Always remember you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it. Come and join us for the next one, and until then, friends, bye bye